Hello folks and welcome again to Advent of Code in F sharp. They ate already. Um, <coughs> the bell has just struck midnight. Um, so the solution for the aid is available. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at yesterday. Yesterday I left off um, where we were counting fuel for crab submarines. And my solution was naive and took... 40 seconds because we were like mm, calculating the sum of the first n natural numbers by putting the first n natural numbers in a list and then uh, summing them up when i was brewing my second coffee of the day uh that struck a, a rang a bell that is just a mathematical series and it's a very uh, familiar one and yes wouldn't you know it there isn't a formula to calculate that number instead of uh, building the full list so yeah, instead of uh, building a full list, you can do this uh, silly little thing. Just a multiplication and, and a division, and you end up with a very fast algorithm. So that was the only change we needed to do for yesterday's puzzle to get it uh, in a reasonably fast manner. Anyway, let's take a look at day eight. Ooh, that looks like an LED display. That is cool. So, seven segment search. You barely reach the safety of the cave when the whale smashes into the cave mouth, collapsing it. Sensors indicate another exit to this cave at a much greater depth, so you have no choice but to press on. As your submarine slowly makes its way through the cave system, you notice that the four digit seven segment displays in your submarine are malfunctioning. They must have been damaged during the escape. You'll be in a lot of trouble without them, so you'd better figure out what's wrong. What is a 7 segment display? Just like the clock LEDs? Yeah, just like the clock LED things. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, each digit of a 7 segment display is rendered by turning on or off any of the 7 segments named A through G. Okay, that is what the letters mean. That is just a segment. Mm -hmm. So to render one, only segments C and F. Yeah, yeah, okay. The problem is that the signals which control the segments have been mixed up on each display. The submarine is still trying to display numbers by producing output on signal wires A through G. Cool. But those wires are connected to segments randomly. Not cool. Worse, the wire segment connections are mixed up separately for each four-digit display. Okay. All of the digits within a display use the same connection zone. Wait, I have to repeat that sentence. So, wires are connected to segments randomly. Worse, wire segment connections are mixed up separately for each of those different displays. Yes, all of the digits within a display use the same connection. Okay, so the wires don't change uh, when time goes on. Okay, that makes sense. This is a large exercise uh, so you might know that only signal wires b and g are turned on but that does not mean segments b and g are turned on okay so we have signal wires and we have segments and the puzzle gives both letters that's a good way to confuse me the only digit that uses two segments is one okay yeah. so by counting segments you can start to figure out which number they mean yeah you still can tell which wire goes to which segment. That is true. For that, we need to collect more information. This sounds like a really interesting problem. For each display, you watch the changing signals for a while. Make a note of all 10 unique signal patterns you see. Okay, so we look, we are observing for long enough to see every digit go by on every. Uh, seven segment display we write down a single four digit output value Those a bit what is our input a single four digit oh no <laughs> oh no this, this is a book this is a, a whole article uh, i'm just gonna grab that already so i can let it sink in that it's a massive amount of characters <clears throat> where were we 
uh, here. So for each display, we watch the changing signals for a while, make a note of all 10 unique patterns we see, and then write down a single four digit output value. Single four digit output value. What, what does that mean? Using the single patterns, you should be able to work out which pattern concerns con corresponds to which digit, sorry. For example, Leah, let's talk examples. Here is what you might see in a single entry in your notes. That is correct. Uh, so there are 10 unique signal patterns. One, two, rope, everything before this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, everything before the pipe. The limiter and finally the four digit output value. Okay, so that's the four digit output value. Within an entry, the same wire segment connections are used, but you don't know what the connections actually are. Yeah, that is okay. I can follow that. The unique signal patterns correspond to the 10 different ways the submarine tries to render a digit using the current wire segment connections because seven is the only digit that uses three segments. DAB in the above example means that to render a seven, those three segments are on. Mm -hmm. And then we have a segment with only, or four is the only number with four segments turned on. Okay, so then we can reverse engineer what every wire means. Okay. Using this information, you should be able to work out which combination of signal wires corresponds to each of the 10 digits. Then you can decode the four digit output value. So that's everything behind the pipe yeah unfortunately of course there's a but uh, in the above example all of the digits in the output value uh, all of the digits in the output value oh so this example yeah um use five segments and are more difficult to deduce they should be already on the left side of the pipe no Uh, are they? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. C D F B E. No, I am confused. Should not. Should should did these not be the ten different digits we have, and then these four of those ten? All of the digits in the output value blah, 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 use five segments and are more difficult to deduce. Now focus on the easy digits. Boo, easy digits. What do they mean? Okay, the one that have unique number of segments. Count only digits in the output values apart after the pipe. In the above example, there are 26 instances of digits that use a unique number of segments. Wait, part one sounds like not even solving the problem. We just need to uh, count the number of one, four, seven, and eights. Yeah, that's not even solving the, the, the real problem. That's just taking a look at everything on the right hand side, and seeing uh, whether it has two segments, three segments, seven segments, or I don't know how many four has, but one, two, three, four segments. That should uh, actually be easy to do, right? It's a nice warm up. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's grab this. This is an interesting snippet of information. I'm gonna just drop that somewhere, maybe in VS Code, so we can play around with it in a text editor. Let's now see. Okay, there we go. So this has one, two, but this is seven segments lighted up. This has two segments lighted up. Oh no, I'm destroying the formatting. Uh, one has two segments lined up. One, two, three, four, five for the number two. One, two, three, four, five for the number three as well. One, two, three, four for the number four. Five, five. One, two, three, four, five, six for six. That's easy. One, two, three for seven. Uh, uh, all seven for eight. 
and that should be six one two three four five six for number nine so the easy ones are the ones in the example or the ones they ask us to do in part one that's a a one a four a five seven and that's it right one four five seven if that lines up then i understand what we have to do at least no one four seven or eight okay eight makes sense why why is five not a good uh, not an easy number oh yeah three and two have the same number my bad okay then i understand what we have to do So for part one, we just uh, parse the words uh, on the right hand side of the right hand side of the pipe. And we split on spaces to get the words, and then we just count the words or the, the digits uh, that are of segment lengths of the unique segment lengths of one, four, seven, or eight. And we just count the number of digits that use. One of those easy combinations not too bad not too bad grab the example and let's get started i'm not gonna make too much effort for part one because i assume that part two will do the full thing so we'll just uh, dive into the real meat of the problem uh, then so i'm not even gonna introduce types i'm just gonna yolo it so uh, for every line let's parse that i'm just gonna stay in the array world and let's parse on the pipe this should give us uh, the right hand side at least that's already a <laughs> interesting uh problem what am i doing wrong uh... no this is not what i expect to see here is it because there's a new line in there there's a new line in there and that's not how it's in the actual input, right? No. Ah, silly formatting in the example. I'm just gonna manually fix it. Can I replace the new line? Nah, I'm not even gonna try. I, the multi cursor or the regex replacement thing, I am not very good at it. Uh, so I'm just gonna do it this way this should give us more yeah and if we take the second element we have the right hand tokens that looks that appears to be correct on a cursory glance so um, now let's just split those on space Uh, I'm getting my parentheses messed up. So this is every line and we parse the right hand side into words or like space delimited sequences. Yep. And let's map every one of those to uh, their length. right seven one two three those look like they could be correct and then we need to filter out uh, instead of that let's maybe just collect every one of those uh, counts in a single list or a single array that works a bit better than having to dig into a list of lists and then 
uh, one, four, seven, or eight. Those are those unique segments. So it's uh, two, four, three, seven. Two, three, four, and seven. Two, three, four, seven, right? Let's make double sure. Two, three, four, seven. Yeah. Uh, so the easy number of segments. So let's filter those out. So array dot accept. Uh, easy number of segments. I'm going to do one quick check because I always forget how accept works. Does it remove duplicate entries? So if you say this list except one, will it throw away both ones? Yes, it will. Okay, that's what we need. And then we just need to count the numbers. Uh, that looks weird. Let's do this. No. That cannot be the case, right? <laughs> there should be 26 instances. What am I doing wrong here? Uh, not except those should be the only ones we take a look at. Right, this should be this should be what we want. And if it's the last argument, we can just do this. No? I thought we could do this. Never mind. 26, that looks better. So let's run this on input. Okay, that was doable if it's correct. That was correct. Now the hard part. Oh, even more text. Cool. Through a little deduction, we should be able to determine the remaining digits. Consider again the first example above. After some careful analysis, the mapping between wires and segments only makes sense in the following configuration. Okay, so then magic happens. We do machine learning. Cool. Uh, unique signal patterns would correspond to the following digits. Mm -hmm. Then the four digits of the output value can be decoded. Yeah, so that's the full shebang. Therefore, the output value for this entry is that number. Following the same process for each entry in the larger example above, the output value of each entry can be determined. Yep, adding all of those values in this large example uses a number. Mm -hmm. For each entry, determine all of the connections and decode the four digit output values. What do you get if you add up all of those? So yeah, unsurprisingly, part two does uh, make us do the full decoding. We actually have not done the easy decoding, or we have, but um, we have not represented it. Okay, how will we tackle this problem for real? I'm going to make a lookup table mapping segment lengths to possible numbers. That's a start. For these we know. Uh, actually, for every one of those we know. Let's let's do that first. So we have that somewhere easily accessible. Um, so let's make a table or a map. Uh, mapping, what is it? Segment count to Um, candidates so that maps the number of segments that are lit and the possible numbers this could represent uh, and that should map a 0 to a 7 or a 0 to a7 and potentially other numbers uh, 1 Oh no, it's the other way around. So seven segments, that's a zero. Two segments, that's a one. Uh, five segments, that's a two. Uh, 
or a three. Wait, that's two or three. Oh yeah, that's not a five in there. The I'm, I'm mixing up the both, uh, like segments uh, and segment counts and numbers. So five, two, three, four. This should be only a four. A five should also be five. Six. That is a six. Or a nine. Four, it's a list, so it needs a semicolon. Three is a seven. Seven is an eight. We already have that. And six should be a nine. Mm, does it make sense? Do we have two, four, three, uh, seven should be an easy. Why did I think? Seven should be an easy one that maps to eight and only eight. Why am I putting an eight here? So because zero should be a six. Zero should be a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why did I? It's the first number and I already... <laughs> misread it oh so that's six or a zero so that can go here and the zero has to go here now we have a seven a two a four and a three that looks correct for the six we have three candidates a zero a six and a nine yes for a five we have three candidates as well two three five that's correct. Now that I see this, there's actually two, only two edge cases. Maybe we could do without this lookup and with an explicit if else kind of switch. But anyway. Um, I feel a doodle session coming on. I feel a doodle session coming on. I'm going to grab this, drop that uh, somewhere I can keep seeing it. And then I'm going to grab my drawing board. Let's, let's do the drawing again. Or maybe let's take a screenshot so we can write over it. Zoom in a bit. Okay, so the easy cases are seven segments which return result in an eight, two segments which results in a one, four should result in a four. I'm gonna write that next to it just as we did four and a four and three segments should be a seven uh, but 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 we for example for one we don't know whether it's which which is which we get like two signals in but they could be either how do we do the algorithm? How do we match or figure out that the CC segment is the top right segment? Maybe if we map a number to the lit segment values. Yeah, that's starting to sound like a reasonable thing to do. So for example, if we map uh, zero to yeah, everything. So A, B, C, E, F, G. I have like a stylus next to me. Let's maybe grab that. That will be easier to write with. Let's see if my writing.
everything works yeah So if we have the list of segments uh, per number uh, and we figure out the easy cases, for example, what can we do? So I'm just going to do the one case as well, maybe in a less heavy font. That's better. Uh, one should be CF. Let's do four also, because I'm not seeing the pattern yet. B, C, D, F. If we have something like this, we could do nothing at all to figure out matches. <laughs> hmm, interesting problem. If we have like a, a one and a seven, we could figure out something. If we have a one and a seven, we know that the segment that is only in the seven, that has to be the A segment because that's not lit up on the one and that is lit up on the seven part. Uh, maybe we can do the same for seven and four because that also has like one difference in number of segments. No, we cannot because they are lighting different segments. Oh no, actually we can do the same. Or we can deduce the A segment. That's the one that is in the seven and not in the four. And we should like also know that B and D are the other segments, but again, those are two different segments. This is actually starting to sound a bit complicated. I like it. Um, I'm gonna do the full mapping here in my drawing. So six zero uh, two was what five three was five as well. Uh, I'm just doing this a whole lot of times to get familiar with <laughs> with the problem space a bit. I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, and I'm not seeing like other easy ways to deduce stuff. What happens if we already... Oh yeah, of course! I'm making it harder than it should be, or I'm making it harder than it is. There's some extra information I'm not uh, taking into account, and it is that for every line, so for every uh, case we have, we do have the... 10 digits, it's not that we only have a couple of them, we have all 10 digits every time. So we can do that. I think we might be figure out a sequence to uh, decode everything. So let's say we look for the, the one because it has two values, and then we look for the seven because it has three, then we already figure out segment AAA. Yeah, that is true. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, let's write that algorithm down. So take uh, the one and the seven, then we figure out the A segment. And if we have the seven and the four, well, actually that helps, helps us not that much because we already have this A segment. Uh, we also know like C and F, or we know uh, that two locations are both C and F, but we don't know which one is which. Uh, looking at four itself does not help us for that problem. But for four, uh, we also know which are B and D. So like two locations that can be either. I feel like I'm solving a Sudoku puzzle. It's a bit of the same constraint solving and uh, doing magic. Uh, what's another, 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 for five, for five. We already know A. We know maybe C, F, and B, D. 
GG. I think we can figure out C. C is the value that is in four. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this straight. C is a value that is in the four, but is missing from five. Yeah, so we can deduce C. And then, of course, we also can deduce F because that's the other thing in the four that we have or in the one and the seven. Wait, am I confusing myself? No, no, that's correct. So then we actually know ACF. What's the, the next case? Because then it's... Oh, no, we don't even know the five. What I'm doing right now is not correct. Five is not an easy case. Five is a, a hard case that can be uh, a two or three or a five. So never mind. What's the next step here? What were the easy numbers again? Two, three. Four and seven. So four, that's still case. Two, two, two three. Or what's seven again? Eight. Yo, this is this is tricky. I I think we might be onto something here with this. Uh, Sudoku constraint solving kind of thing. Just not seeing it right now. So if we take a look at um, the number 7 and the number 1, which we can figure out easily because we have uh, easy numbers, then we can definitely figure out A, yes. And we know like th these two slots can be a C and an F. Next step in the process, looking at a four. Yeah, then we know like BD, those can be those two, but that's all it gives us, which is not a lot. Okay, but if we take, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we know A already, we can remove A from the search space. So if you remove A from the search space, what happens? Not a lot. <laughs> A is used everywhere in the search space, except in the one and the four, but those are two numbers we already processed. Uh, shoot. Let's go back to the... I'm, I'm not missing a, a hint, right? This is something we're supposed to figure out. Through a little deduction, yeah. A little deduction, okay. <laughs> so let's deduce. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to think that maybe if we write out this this full black thing uh, and we do like cross cross off everything we already figure out uh, the pattern might like magically show up so i'm gonna try that uh zero why am i writing zero one four here because those are random numbers i chose to do okay so let's keep doing that uh Zero is A, B, C, D, F. What am I doing there? Okay. 
yeah one is the cnf two is a c d e g um i'm gonna drop back to black three is a c d f g four is b c d f we already had that one <clears throat> One brain, see a pattern. Okay. So we can easily figure out a that that much we know we kind of know cf but does that help us that might actually help us if we strip away cf uh, does one of the numbers become like magical, magically uh, understandable? If we strip out CF, we have four for the zero. So yeah, we have four for zero. Four for zero. Three for three. And we already know A, so A is actually gone from the equation. Um, wait, I'm gonna visually strike away the A's. So let's strike away the A's. That is a solved problem. solve problem and does not give us any more information about numbers because every number has them as an a okay cf 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 strike away that what if we strike away cf then four only has two left three also has two left six has three left that's the number we have not heard yet Ah, uh, nine is three left as well. So no, that actually does not work as well as I wish it should. Oh no, actually we can do something that way. Because the D... Uh, D and B, D and B, C, F, C, F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at, if, if we're at this stage in the process of deducing, we know the A and we know a bit of information about C, F and B, D. We then take a look at number nine. Can we take a look at number nine? No, of course not. It's one of those uh, heavily used segment numbers. Uh, yeah, it's one of those heavily used, but we can figure out that it's not a six because CF has to be in there. But it's still a tie between a 9 and a 0 because both have CF in there. Only one has D in there. 0 does not. So we can actually figure out what the 9 is. And if we know what the 9 is, we know G. For sure. Yes, we know G for sure. And we also have no new information cool so let's strike out g as in this is a solved segment what's popping up out right now 
then yeah for example we can take a look at eight eight is uniquely defined by seven segments and that's just the difference between nine and eight is e so that gives us for sure the e yep gives us for sure an e What's next? What's next? Um, if I look at number three and four, if we look at three and four, we can figure out something else. We can figure out which exactly. Uh, oh, can we look at three? No, we cannot look at three. Three is uh, still in the. No, actually, at, at this point in the process, we know one, two, three, one, two. There is a difference in knowledge here. We figured out, or we still have to figure out three elements for a three, and we have to figure out only two elements for a two. Does that help? So one of the five sets and um, we know five has the same number of unknowns. Mm. And it sounds like I'm ma making this way too complicated. But this, this process of el elimination thing we have one, two, three of the seven numbers. It, I, we're so close, I can feel it. <laughs> but the, the through, what was I thinking? The two, three thing? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Two, three, five. Those are both in the set of five segments. Uh, we know something about C, F, B, and D. C, F, B, and D. Ah, that's everything. Damn it. Oh, but wait. Uh, we know something about C, F, B, and D that is true. But uh, yeah, we know that, like, from, from the four case, we know the B and the D have to be uh, in these two positions. Uh, and if we take a look at the number six, we can figure out F. Because we know B, D should be in two different locations so we can figure out the third one which is f yeah we can and um, no six is not one number we can easily take a look at no six is not a number we can easily take a look at shoot again oh actually it is four and nine have exactly the same Four nine have exactly the same layout. Nine only has two more, and we already figured out those two more. So I think we could figure out uh, B D F B C F. Yeah, but zero is also in the bucket of um, six segment things. Should we keep hammering on this way or am I going going about it all wrong or suboptimally? What were the easy numbers again? Seven, eight, one, four, right? One, four, seven, eight. Have we used one, four, seven, and eight already? We kind of did. Shoot.
aren't there things we can figure out when looking at one, four, seven, and eight? Can and I'm not seeing it. Oh, we can. Yeah, okay. I was thinking we can figure out the nine, but we already know we can figure out the nine. Uh, but if we figured out the nine, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. Could we figure out the nine? Was that a. a thing we could do, actually? I already forgot how I got to <laughs> this step in the deduction. I think I'm going to need another coffee to, uh, to solve this. Hey chat, uh, have you solved part two for today yet? I am like really stuck on the uh, through a little deduction part. And like trying to deduce stuff, but uh, I got get as far as this. I can figure out the A segment pretty easily. And then I'm super stuck. Or not stuck, but I'm, then I'm making it really complicated. And I would like some confirmation as to... Uh, you have to go that through this many hoops. It feels like tricky. Way too tricky for my brain on a 6 o'clock in the morning kind of thing. So, uh, if you already solved part 2. Please let me know whether you did the same kind of uh, strategy here. <clears throat> Oh, come on, brain, don't fail me. So, yeah, let's let's go over everything again. Refresh my, my uh, short-term memory. Uh, if you look at the segment of two segments, or the number with three and two segments, which are one and seven, we can easily figure out which segment is A. That is something we can do, yes. Uh, and we also know a bit of information about C and F. The right-hand side, we just don't know which is which. Then go to the four which we can also easily find yep uh we don't know anything i don't know why i'm putting the four as the next step because that only gives us a little bit of extra information about b and d and then my, a while ago i was thinking now we can do something with nine i don't see it anymore <laughs> oh yeah we do i do see it if you grab a four um we already know the A part, then we can figure out the G part, that is true. That's the only segment we have not seen in a 4. Yeah, that makes sense. Then we can take a look at 8. Why can we take a look at 8? By the same principle. There's one segment in there that we have never seen before, which is the E. Yeah. But then, but then, but then. Then we have like all buckets with five segments and all buckets with six segments. In those buckets, do we see something we can use? Yeah, in the five bucket. In the five bucket, we can do something more. Uh, we know like the two locations for C and F. Uh, we know the locations for C and F, and in the five bucket, there is only one number with a C and F. How, how will I write this down? So, take a look at C, F. <laughs> in the fives. So that should give us uh, the number three. And in the number three, we can figure out the D segment. Is that correct what I'm saying? So in the five buckets, C and F, there's only one number that has both. 
Uh, so yeah, then we can figure out the D segment, which is in the number three. Okay, then things go fast. In the five buckets, now we have one with just a single one. So then we know, hey, look at two in the five buckets. Uh, how do we say five buckets? <laughs> Something like this. Uh, hey, by the way, two, we can figure out C. Uh, we can strike out C everywhere. Uh, if we know C, we know F. Because we know the C or F thing from a 1 and a 7. Okay, and then if we look at the 4, we can figure out the B as well. Okay, I think we solved it. Or at least... We have a strategy that might just work. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Yeah, that works. Now to reproduce this in code. <clears throat> I've been hammering at it for an hour. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to keep my mind active enough for another hour to solve this, but let's give it a start at least. Um. Maybe we can do something easy before we dive into the actual uh, deduction part. So what you're seeing here is just the part one. I did nothing of the difficult stuff. I just counted characters basically. So now we need to do some actual parsing. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's something I can do with a tired brain. Do some parsing, so let's do that. So we have a line, let's parse that by splitting on the pipe, which we already do. Uh, do we have a name for those concepts? So that's a single entry, signal patterns and uh, digits, output digits. So signal patterns and output digits. Mm, that should be an array we get back, so I Hope we can pattern match on it. Can we do can we do this? Yes we can. Um, then we just need to split both uh, on space. I'm just gonna write a little helper words. That splits on a space. Words for both. What kind of data structure do we want to keep this in? Uh, yeah, of course. The example is a list of strings or an array of strings, so we would we have to map over it. Of course, every line individually, of course. Okay, my brain is getting tired. We won't do any super intelligent matching right now, I think. <clears throat> but at least this looks correct. Uh, data structure wise. Uh, if we look at this beautiful piece of algorithm we have here, what do we need to be able to do efficiently? Or what do we need to be able to do? Lengths, we need to figure out the length, but that's not so a hard question to ask. Mm. 
maybe sets maybe sets work because you can do magical things like intersect exists i think sets might actually be a good representation for this problem so i'm just gonna make a tuple two sets one for the left hand side of the pipe one for the other on the right hand side and let's leave it at that Nope, that's not what I want. <laughs> I want to have a set for each individual uh, digit, not for uh, the entire thing. Something like this. Oh, I've never seen a tuple format like this that's that looks weird and incorrect to me i'm gonna put some braces around to make it really clear that it's a tuple or at least a bit more clear that did not help auto formatting one little bit maybe we can go a step further and do the bucket thing to make it explicit that uh Buckets are a concept we use in solving this problem. Actually, this this is the bucket thing, right? Seven maps to number eight. Uh, but that's the other way around. We don't know the numbers when we're parsing these strings. Yeah. Um, I'm already not liking this part. I'm just gonna give it some extra names to make it uh, a bit more clear. So these are the signal patterns. And we have the output digits, which is this behemoth. And then we can just uh, do the same thing. So we just extract the two variables here. Your auto formatter cannot format your code. You have smelly code. Something I read yesterday. They do have a point. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm not gonna do the bucket concept in a parse. Parse is a parse, uh, and I'm gonna stop here. This is enough parsing for me. Uh, so let's go to the actual matching. Uh, do we need this segment cancel candidates? Probably we will, so I'm gonna leave it. Um, how do we do this? I'm just gonna start playing around with it in my REPL until uh, we notice something. Or we, we see a pattern <laughs> on how to encode this in a function or something. So the first thing I would do if I were to solve this manually is figure out the numbers one and seven and those are the digits that have two segments and three segments respectively so let's grab uh, just one line i'm also going to deconstruct uh, over here and i'm just going to do a uh, grab the first element so we can start playing around with it and then we can do this for every line uh, later on. So this should be the first line in the example. Mm, is that one, two, three, four for the last one? Yes. The set thing is making it a bit more dif difficult to figure out. But yeah, this is the first line. And we would like to do something with the patterns. Ignore the output for now. And we grab the two segment number and the three segment number is this the one segment 
that has uh, one segment. Yeah, let's call it. No, I'm just gonna call it one. <laughs> so one is this thing. That's the thing with two segments, and seven is the one with three segments. I think we are going to do a lot of lookups on length. Maybe we should give that a name. Yeah, but let's not worry about it just now. Um, we have one and seven. So if we have one and seven, one and seven, we can figure out the A part. Yeah, that's correct. So in this case, the A part would be segment A equals set dot what is it called intersection i think it's the intersection uh, intersection between your seven and the one i don't know which goes where but we'll find it out oh no it's not correct is it no it's not the intersection it's a difference it's a set difference and that should give us just the one thing so we have figured out something d equals uh the A segment or the top segment. Yeah. Ta ta, we have segment A. Only six more to go. It's actually not that bad. Once you figure out the. Or once you figure out a way to deduce. It's just going through the motions, I guess. Should we keep track of the CF thing? Yes, let's keep track of the CF thing because that helped when I was doing it manually. Uh, so that's seven set. So uh, I think we have to do it the other way around. So let's do it this way. Uh, can I do that also by doing a set operation? So we have the seven and we have the one. Can I get the <laughs> twos that are in seven and not in one? Uh, uh, <laughs> wait, what was seven again? BDE, one is DE. So how do we figure out BE? That's just one. Yeah, that's just one. Okay, that was silly. So we know segment A, we know like where both C and F are living. Um, how do we, did we go from this to we know nine? Already forgot. <laughs> Shoot. <clears throat> so we have figured out segment A and we know where segment C and F are living. Then we can take a look at four to get segment B and D. Yeah, that works actually. And we could grab segment G out of there. Okay, so we are going to take a look at four. So we can grab B and D. So four is the digit with four segments, the single one. And we know stuff about this. The CF segment is BE, so we can throw that out. And then we know CG, that should be the BD segment. <laughs> that is, yeah, that's correct. So let's segments b b equals the four minus uh, CF. That's correct, right? CF, four minus CF should give us BD. Which is CG. Yeah, that's correct. So then we have segments B and D. Uh, let's grab, can we grab the nine? We cannot grab the nine. How did we grab the nine? 
We know C F and B D N A. We know C E C F B D N A. So that's the the nine is the number in the six bucket or in the seg six segment uh, numbers digits uh, that has one unknown and both A B C F. That is not the case for a zero. That is not the case for a six. So that might work. That sounds really complicated, actually. It's not really complicated, but I am not. Yeah, okay, let's go. Let's go. We're, we've been going down this road. Let's finish the trip. <clears throat> so we figure out nine by grabbing the six buckets. Uh, digits with six segments. That's not a find, that's a filter because we have more than one. Should be three, one, two, three, uh, which is a zero, a six, and a nine. Now that I'm looking at those three, what do we know? We know CF, we know CF. Actually, we can figure out the which number is six already? Does that help us? Actually, this way we can also figure out C, yeah. Look at all, everything in the six buckets and there's one number that is in two of them and not in the third of one. No, there's two of those. No, never mind. Let's stick with the plan, stick with the program and try to do the find nine thing. <clears throat> Five nine, five nine, five nine, five nine. So it's one of the two that has CF in them, but not D. <laughs> okay. It has to have CF. What was CF again? This. So it's a pattern. Oh no, it's a digit with six segments. Uh, set contains is a single element. Can I do like a has to contain every element in this other set? There has to be something like that. For all is just a predicate, for all is just a predicate. It's proper subset, that sounds familiar. That sounds something like we want. If all the elements, true, if all the elements of the first set are in the second, and at least one element of the second is not in the first. Okay, so that has to be a bigger set. And superset, subset, that's probably also okay if they're equal sets. Yeah, so we can do subset, superset kind of things. Mm -hmm. So, did, a nine is a digit with six segments <laughs> that has to contain CF and that will drop out six. So it has to be a superset of CF. And that should give us two. What's not correct here? Yeah, let's use piping. I'm more used to reading from left to right. Uh, what what's what set one? What's set two? It is a superset if all elements of the second set are in the first. So the second set has to be the smallest one. Yeah. Then we can do the pipe thing. Then we have to uh, do it like this. So it sh this should give us two patterns. It does give us two patterns cool and how do we figure out which is nine and which is zero uh same strategy it also needs bd yeah 
It also needs to have BD as a superset. That should give us just the one. It does give us just the one, so let's grab that one. Uh, now we have nine. And we can get rid of A, B, C, C, F, and B, D, and then we have G. Okay. Mm -hmm. What what is this actually? <laughs> Set difference of the nine with C F and C D. So we do nine minus C F and that thing minus B D. Should give us a single segment. No, that's not a single segment. Oh, oh yeah, we also have A, right? We also have A. Where is A? Segment A. Maybe I should not be uh, going out of the... Yeah, I should not be going out of the set world just yet. So I can do, keep doing set differences. And I'm already tired of uh, having to do this instead of using a pipe. Maybe we can write a helper function so we can write pipes. But this should give us a single set. A set containing a single segment. No. Interesting. Oh yeah. I did some magic here. Yeah. There we go. We know segment G. We know segment G, so <laughs> we figure out two of the seven. That's not too bad. Let's take a look at eight. How do we figure out eight? Eight is an easy number to find or an easy digit because it has seven segments, all seven of them. And we just figured out which number was nine, so we could easily figure out segment E. That is true. So let's figure out eight. Is um, patterns. And we need to figure out the one with all seven segments lit up. Should be a single. Yep, that is a single single number so let's grab that single set and if we do eight minus nine we should end up with no if we do eight minus nine we should end up with segment e yeah and that is segment e But now, <laughs> now we figured out three of the seven. Is there an easier way to go for the rest? Or do we have to do the insane bucket 5, 3D hoop? Uh, my brain is too fried to think about it. I'm just going to soldier along uh, with the original battle plan. If there is a better solution, we'll have to figure it out another time. So for... Apparently, we can figure out segment D now, which is the, the middle one. How? Uh, something with the CF bucket, or segment CF, as I call it in code. CF is the right-hand line. And if we look at the buckets or the patterns with five segments, so that's two, three, and five, and we take CF into account, and AG, do we know A? Yes. Do we know G? Yes. Do we know CF? Yes. Okay. Or it's even easier. Uh, if you look at the five buckets, we know everything. So we know uh, A and G. 
and we know also where C and F live. But there's one thing in that five bucket that we have not seen yet, I think. Which is the D segment. So, figure out numbers uh, with five segments lit up. Subtract CF, subtract A, subtract G. And we should end up with only a single segment. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, digits with five segments instead of the six. So let's grab that filter as well, but do it for five this time. So we expect three of those. Yep. And now we do minus CF, minus A, minus G. So I'm going to uh, put everything in a single set. Which one are we figuring out now? D. So digits with five segments. Put everything in a single set with a union many. Of course, let's make sure that this works. What is, why is my compiler not happy? Uh, <laughs> why is my compiler not happy? I'm confused. Oh, union many probably. Indentation, indentation. Okay, that's the problem. Mm, yeah, so digits with five segments, those are those three. Then we say, put them all in a single set. And then let's start subtracting. I was going to write a helper to do the set difference from left to right instead of parentheses or putting parentheses around everything. Will that make sense? It will make sense for me personally, so I'm going to do it. So let's make a minus, which is which is really weird. <laughs> I say like A minus B, actually no, do B minus A. So I'm flipping the arguments. That's, I'm gonna hate myself when I look at uh, this in an hour. So segment, I'm gonna refactor now. So segment G stays set F, but using my little minus helper. No, let's do it way before that. Let's do it somewhere here. So segment A is a D. 7 is BDE, that's DE, so 7 minus 1, that should still stay D, or at least that's what I'm trying to achieve here. Okay, that reads better in my head, so let's, let's do that. Uh, what was that here? Oh yeah, that's the, the definition, sorry. So let's use that everyone, or let's use that everywhere, so here again. We have segment CF, we have four, so four minus segment CF should give us BD. Filter, 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 superset, superset, that's a different thing. And this is where it actually starts to get useful. So what is segment G right now? It should be an F, so nine minus segment CF. And then I'm already confused. What what do we need to minus now? <laughs> Let's take a look. So nine is the full thing. CF is two. So that should give us a bit less. Gives us a bit less. And then we need to minus BD. And minus A. And I'm forgetting the minus. So that should give us F, right? Yeah. It's still giving us F. So refactor successful. 
let's assume uh, 8 minus 9. Okay, now we're back where we were. We are trying to figure out segment D by using the segments of or the digits with five segments. So that's two, three, and five. We subtract uh, everything we know probably. C, F, A, and G. C, F, A, and G, yeah. So subtract C, F. And subtract G and subtract A. And that should give us a single segment B. Nope. <laughs> That's not giving us a single segment B. What's happening here? So we have C and then we say put them on a single set. So that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Wait, that's everything. <laughs> that's everything, right? What am I doing? That is everything. I'm making it more complicated than it should be, right? Why am I looking at the five buckets? Uh, why am I looking at the five buckets? If like the sum of all those segments is the full seven. A, C, F and G, that's only four. Okay, if we subtract that for every number in the five bucket individually. No, E is in there as well. Why uh, Why did I think this would work? We know E. Okay, we know E. I'm just forgetting about E. I don't think we need to go through the digits with five segment step. If we know A, G, E. And we know about C, F. What's this thing? B. We don't know about B. Huh? We don't know anything about B. We know a bit about B, but we also know a bit about D, so that doesn't help us. Ah, oh, we're so close. Why is that so hard? Hey, chat. Did you figure out part two? Um, I've been struggling for the better part of an hour now on part two. And I'm deducing a lot, but I'm grinding to a halt for the the last half of the digits or the last half of the segments. And currently, uh, I know about A, I know about G, I know about E, and now I'm trying to figure out a next best thing. The strategy I'm using is sets. So every digit I get, I just plump into a set. Uh, so I can do intersections and unions and differences easily, which is working out pretty nicely. Uh, the algorithm or like the pseudo algorithm, the way the strategy I'm using, and that's uh, where I'm struggling with. <clears throat> or at least for the, the, the numbers where we have a lot of for the a lot of same number of segments, that's a tricky part. Uh, so let's take a step back. Let's take a look again. CF. We know CF, or at least we know where both of those live. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I think I know what I was thinking again. If you look at the buckets or the num digits with five segments lit up, there's only one of them where BD, or sorry, CF, are both lit up and that's the number three and if we know the number three then we can figure out segment t cool let's do that apparently i was thinking that before 
Yeah, I was thinking that before. It was literally my process, but my notation here sucks. <laughs> so I just had to reinvent it again. Let's try to figure out number three. Uh, digits with five segments is something we still need. But now we can figure out the number three by uh, finding the number with CF in there. Yeah, it's the only number with CF in there. Uh, we do something, eh? yeah, we do something similar. So three is the only where, one where CF is a part of both. Yeah. It's funny, we also do that for figuring out the nine. Uh, we have a single element, so that is the three, correct. And if we have the three, we can just figure out the D. So three is minus CF. Uh, minus A. It's a bad sign that I already know all these things by heart. Segment G. Three is a single set, so let's grab it by using sequence.head. We have it as a single set represented three, yeah. And if we do three minus that, minus that, minus that, yeah, then we get segment D. Yay, there we go. So we actually figure out segment D, which is one, two, three, four. Over halfway there. I have to get ready for work really soon because here in Belgium it's uh, six o'clock when these puzzles unlock. So I don't think I'll be able to finish this puzzle. But I remembered the the last part going really fast. So let's let's see here. We should be able to figure out uh, which number is two now. Apparently, according to past me. <laughs> How? How do we figure that out? Oh yeah, there's an E in there, an E we have not seen yet. That could be, that could be a way to do it. So let's look at two and five. Subtract CF, subtract A, subtract B, subtract G, and then we have a B and an E. That's not helpful. Oh yeah, we kind of know something about B because B is also in a four. And we know BD. Yeah, so let's take two and five out of the five buckets because we know already three. And then subtract BD. C, F, A, D, and G. So, subtract everything. No, we don't know B yet. Yes, yeah, so, so subtract everything we know. And we should end up with... Why am I seeing C down here? It makes no sense. Oh yeah, that could also work. We're on the right track here, but uh, I have to get ready for work. It's a super bummer that I didn't finish this uh, in the time I allowed myself to finish it. But it is what it is. So thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you had more luck with the like one line. It's a simple deduction thing than me. And otherwise, happy coding. And I'll see you uh, later for the rest of this puzzle. Bye bye.